Cole tried to reward the teens with some money, but they refused. Instead, they gave her their phone numbers in case she ever needed help again, even if it was just around the house, which means that their parents are so proud. That's exactly right. So some very crazy. happy moms and dads out there. Now, this is really interesting. Attention all over the country here. The case of a homeschooling family accused of not teaching their children anything reached the Texas Supreme Court today. Yeah, Joe and Jennifer join us now for East Texas News at 5. Guys, this family is accused of not properly educating their kids because they were allegedly waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. And this is a potentially landmark showdown between religious liberty and the state's ability to ensure youngsters actually learn something. This case could now have broad implications on the nation's booming homeschool ranks. Plus, she jumped from a two-story building after her apartment caught fire. Now, this East Texas woman is telling her story to East Texas News from a hospital bed. And the USDA recalls more than 160,000 pounds of ground beef for possible E. coli. Caring, committed, proud of East Texas. You're watching East Texas News at 5. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. An East Texas woman is in the hospital tonight after jumping out of her apartment to escape a fire. That fire broke out shortly after 1 o'clock on Sunday morning at the Scenic Hills apartment complex in Lindale. That's in the 300 block of South Industrial. 26-year-old Tiffany Collins, a resident of that complex, is still in jail tonight. According to the arrest warrant, Collins told fire marshals that she set a fire in apartment number 32 but would not say how. She's now charged with arson of a habitation a first degree felony and also assault on a public servant. Today, that injured resident took East Texas News Paul Rivera through a frantic moments of what likely saved her life and others. Today, investigators combing through the remains of a Lindale apartment, a massive blaze that engulfed the second floor. The glow of the fire seen from far away in this picture. The lone injury happening after Tracy Smith, a resident on the second floor right next to the apartment where the fire is said to have started, awoke to a loud noise in the middle of the night. I thought it was somebody was breaking in my house. So I got up out of the bed and went into the living room and I thought, well, there shouldn't be no bright light coming through my window and I opened the door and the fire started coming in, so I slammed my door shut. She says the fire began to come closer and started growing. She knew she needed to act quickly. I raised the window, pushed the screen out, I climbed out, I hung there as long as I could, and I just dropped. And I knew that I would broke my ankles. Tracy then crawled down the sidewalk, trying to wake everyone up. And I was screaming at everybody to help me and to get out. The apartments was on fire. She says the fall broke her ankle in three different places, but believes that if she hadn't woken up, it could have been a lot worse. When I was sitting on the sidewalk, it had already went through my front door and was into my living room already. I woke up for a reason or I wouldn't be here and neither would anybody else. That reason to get everyone away from a fire that claimed their homes, but not their lives. Paul Rivera, East Texas News. Tracy's family tells us that she will possibly have surgery tomorrow. As for the fire, there's no word yet on how it started. Collins is being held on a $775,000 bond. We are learning new details on that Russian jet that fell out of the sky in Egypt, killing all 224 people on board. The executives of the Russian airline say there was no technical malfunction or pilot error that would have caused that plane to break apart 30,000 feet in the air. Metrojet officials blamed what they called external factors for this crash, but aviation experts in the U.S. say it's too soon to know. There are a couple things we can look at. We could say perhaps it was a bomb that made the airplane come apart, or perhaps it was some unknown structural failure where, where the airplane just came apart. But right now we don't have any evidence that points us one way or the other. The U.S. Director of National Intelligence says that while there is no direct evidence of any terrorist involvement yet, it could not be excluded that the plane was indeed brought down by ISIS. A homeschooling family in El Paso is embroiled in a legal battle after being accused of not teaching its children anything because it was, quote, waiting to be raptured. Right now, Texas does not require parents to give standardized testing to homeschooled students. 
East Texas News Blair Lede spoke to an East Texas homeschooler who says mandating testing would just add unneeded stress. This classroom has the books, but not the bells. They like to start coloring or drawing or reading right away. That hasn't stopped Miss Elliman's students from excelling, like this toddler who counts. I know Arrow is counting when she was barely one and a half. I'm For this three-year-old like, with a vast vocabulary, Brittany says each family chooses to homeschool to for its own reasons. Texas. The main reasons we homeschool is some of our kids have special needs. The Texas Homeschool Coalition estimates 300,000 kids, mm -hmm. like the Ellermans, are learning at home. Texas is, is fantastic with our regulations and our rules and the amount of freedom that we have. Those freedoms are being reevaluated in the Texas Supreme Court after a mother of nine in El Paso was accused of not teaching her kids at all. If it's not something you can handle or maybe it's not for the season of your life, then don't set your kids back if, if that's not it. As of now, homeschooled children in Texas are exempt from those standardized tests. I think that you don't have to look very far even in public school situations, whether it be children, parents, or teachers who are in some way opposed or frustrated to this mandatory testing. The ruling could change the way class is conducted for homeschoolers all across Texas. Brittany, like other homeschoolers, says the pressure is just not necessary. Tighter regulations, just like how they have tighter, um, higher reasons for testing, it's, um, it kind of adds a stress that might not be needed there to benefit for the most learning for the kids. Blair Lede, East Texas News. Texas homeschoolers are only required to provide a curriculum that proves a bona fide education. That means students just have to meet basic educational goals in reading, spelling, grammar, mathematics, and citizenship. Health officials are investigating an E. coli outbreak linked to Chipotle restaurants in the Pacific Northwest. Nearly two dozen people have fallen ill, several hospitalized, and now the company is voluntarily and temporarily closing dozens of locations. This is in Oregon and Washington State. None of this affects East Texas locations. The excruciating pain in my abdomen was something I've never experienced. It feels like your guts are being ripped out. Now more than 167,000 pounds of ground beef are also being recalled due to an E. coli contamination. It is not known yet if these two are related. We're told the recalled meat was processed by an All-American Meats in Omaha and was shipped nationwide. For more information on which packages of ground beef are affected, you should head over to our websites, kltv.com or ktre.com. Click on the big red box and there you will find a link called beef recall. Animal activists say Dallas Cowboy Des Bryant does not have the proper authority to own and care for his capuchin monkey. Now today PETA published an article on its website saying that it has sent a letter to DeSoto authorities asking that Bryant's monkey be given to a sanctuary. Officials with PETA say that monkeys belong in the wild not in the hands of football players who acquire exotic animals just to make a splash on Instagram. Bryant posted this photo of the monkey on his Instagram account last week. Taylor Swift is being sued for allegedly stealing lyrics for her hit song, Shake It Off. Musician Jesse Braham claims that his 2013 song, Haters Gonna Hate, contains the same 22 word phrase that Swift used in Shake It Off. Braham is seeking $42 million in damages from Swift and her record label as was a writing credit on Shake It Off. Whether you're pregnant or pondering parenthood, chances are you have a ton of questions. Coming up, we'll introduce you to some handy apps that do a solid job of connecting you with the information and resources you need. And I am outside in front of the KLTV studios here in downtown Tyler. And you know, we always do the Coach for Kids campaign during the month of October and we get the kids involved in Smith and in Gregg County to collect as many coats as they can. And we're doing the Smith County, I guess, award giveaway to the youngsters here today. We've got uh, White House Junior High School, or White House, yep, they're here. And we've also got the Spanish Club here from Bullard. And they were actually one and two this year. But who was one and who was two? Well, we're going to give out the, uh, the award to the Bullard High School Spanish Club for collecting over 600 coats. Congratulations to you. Very nice. And... Winning again for the 13th year in a row, 
is White House. They collected 660 coats, and this was from the junior high, is that correct? There you go, congratulations. Let's get a round of applause for all these youngsters. Very nice, job well done. And between these two groups, just these two groups, 600 coats were collected to keep young people warm this winter. And in just a few minutes, I'll come back to see if we're gonna have any weather where you might actually have to wear a winter coat. We'll be back in just a few minutes, stick around. Tonight. The water is, is absolutely safe. The city says there's nothing to worry about, but is there more to the story? It's frankly a foul lie. So is your drinking water safe? Seven investigates tonight at six. Storm Tracker Weather is sponsored by Dairy Queen. DQ. This is the stop sign of Texas. And again, I want to thank all of the youngsters from the Bullard Spanish Club, the Bullard High School Spanish Club, and White House Junior High School for getting involved in the Coats for Kids campaign. That was the Smith County first and second place winners there. And we will do Gregg County. Not sure which day, but it'll be soon. And we'll let you know who the winner in Gregg County was. And speaking of White House Junior High School, that is our Grant Flannery Neighborhood WeatherNet Stop for today. Now, this isn't a day where you're going to wear those big old winter coats and is any winter weather at least cold enough to wear a winter coat on its way. Well, we'll talk about that as we kind of progress throughout uh, this weather cast. But 80%, folks, relative humidity at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, folks, that is very high. We had dense fog around the area this morning. I think we'll probably have it once again. But as you look outside again, where I just was a few moments ago, it is cloudy. It is humid. There is really not much wind to speak of. The flag's just pretty much laying there. So it is a really uncomfortable humid late afternoon. Storm Tracker Live Doppler radar is very quiet right now. Temperature wise, some near the 70 degree mark in Tyler it is 70. 66 in Longview, 68 right now in Lufkin. And let's see the warm spots are at 71 in Palestine, Canton, Livingston, and in Jasper at this hour. Humidities though, whew, really, really high. Jacksonville, look at that, 80% relative humidity, 83% in Nacogdoches, 84 in center, folks. These, again, should normally be in the 35% range during the latter part of the afternoon on a somewhat normal day, so it is very humid out there. 65, my buddy Gordon Reed is reporting that from his place in Henderson. We got a 72 in Crockett, and some actually reporting some sunshine out there as it begins to slowly set here in East Texas earlier than it was last week at this time. Getting darker sooner now with the, the change in time. Pollen today, we have no trees, one weed, it's ragweed, no grass, and the molds are way up at 12,017. We look at precision cast, we kind of keep these clouds, at least some type of cloud cover through the night tonight. Watch out for the fog in the morning. Maybe a patch or two of sunshine during the afternoon, tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Maybe a star or two as we start off Wednesday. I think it'll be completely cloudy, hopefully partly cloudy by late in the afternoon. Then we start to see some rain moving in from the west. I don't think we're going to see much in East Texas until we get into our day on Friday. Yeah, I know. Friday again. <laughs> Thursday, actually late Thursday and Friday this time around. 8 o'clock tonight, it'll be cloudy, 64 degrees, about 59 and foggy in the morning. But up to around 75, I think some cloud cover will break. So we'll see a little bit of sun by 3 tomorrow afternoon. So about 77 for our day on Tuesday, 79 on Wednesday. Then we increase those chances for showers and storms very late on Thursday as a front approaches the area. And this, uh, this may make you cool down just a little bit. Folks, there's only 52, 52 shopping days left until Christmas. I know, we all need to get started, I think. <laughs> Excuse me, here's your storm tracker seven day forecast. There's the front Friday morning as it moves through. We're going to increase it to an 80% chance for showers and thunderstorms, decreasing during the afternoon to about a 50% chance. So I think, again, we could have some rain on these Friday night football games. Saturday, just a slight chance for rain. I think Sunday, though, of next week, it's a little cooler, 50 in the morning, 66 in the afternoon. And then by Monday, I think we drop down into the upper 40s for lows. So maybe wow. that'll be the time to bring out at least a light jacket. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, there are apps for maps and apps for menus, but have you heard about the apps that deliver details on pregnancy? It covers everything from how to get pregnant to preparing the parents to be on what to expect during pregnancy to navigating life after the baby arrives. East Texas News' Julia Janae shares the lowdown on some of the most popular parenting apps available. Like many new moms-to-be, Trisha Huffman consults with girlfriends who've been there. The day that I found out I was pregnant, right away, they were like, download this app. 
So I actually have been using apps since the moment I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> Just a few years ago, pregnancy apps weren't even an option. Now they're incredibly popular, according to Dr. Nathaniel De Nicola with the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. The last estimate, it was a few months ago, is that there are about 1,800 OBGYN apps. Just OBGYN. From apps that track ovulation to apps that track contractions, apps that tell you the best routes to hospitals, apps that help you journal. It is wonderfully overwhelming. Natalie Diaz is author of What to Do When You're Having Two. She believes the apps offer a new kind of convenience. Instead of having to ask an embarrassing question about like hemorrhoids and incontinence to your best friend, while I'm laying in bed, I could get the answers to those things during my pregnancy right away from my tablet or smartphone. The options are endless. Full term tracks contractions and lets you upload and send them to your doctor. My Pregnancy Today gives you day-to-day -day updates on what's happening with your body and the baby. What to expect when you're expecting offers tidbits, tips, and tricks, similar to what you'd find in the best-selling book. What to eat or exercises or concerns you might have um, all sorts of things. And it even gives you like a weekly like tip for dad. Baby Bump provides a community forum where you can connect with other expectants. Then there's the WebMD pregnancy app. From, you know, a tracking feature to a journal feature to a what's happening this week feature to a community feature. But both of our experts stress you should always use your phone to call the doctor instead of turning to an app when dealing with any medical concerns. These app developers and these app services in some cases really are providing medical advice. Certainly it's some in, in the realm of medical counseling and it's there, there are no um, there's not much oversight on it. Our mom to be Trisha says consulting the apps leaves her feeling more informed, much less stressed. They probably make for a happier, healthier, more relaxed pregnancy. Julia Janae, East Texas News. Most of these apps are not approved or sponsored by medical professionals. Dr. Denicola suggests relying on apps with medical partnerships over others. He also says that there are text-based apps that deliver info via text to you each day. Well, could the family dog lower your child's asthma risk? Coming up, we'll talk with East Texas News Med Team Dr. Red Dominguez about the relationship between the respiratory disease asthma and early exposure to animals. Stay with us. In Med Team News, a new study suggests that early exposure to dogs and farm animals can help prevent asthma in children. Yeah, joining us now live via Skype from Methodist Dallas Medical Center is East Texas News Med Team Dr. Ed Dominguez. Hey, Dr. Ed. Hi, Joe. All right, as an asthma sufferer myself, I've got to hear how this works. <laughs> well, this is very interesting. It's what's called immune priming. And so what happens is when children are exposed at a very young age, usually within the first one to two years of life, Joe, to almost any number of proteins, but in this case, animals and dogs, they can prime their immune system to get used to all these types of proteins and bacteria. So by the time they reach school age, their likelihood of allergies, and in this case, asthma, is much lower. The study that was done showed that when children were exposed to dogs in that first one year of life, by the time they reached the age of seven in school, their risk for asthma was decreased by 13%. But for farm animals, many more animals, many more different kinds of proteins, even more priming, that risk went down to 52%. So significantly uh, protected once people, uh, the children got to, to school after being exposed to all these animals. Well, Dr. Ed, there were, however, some limitations in this study. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so my major concern about the limitation, even though this is the largest study, Jennifer, of its type ever to be done with the most number of children, uh, it was done in a northern European country, a single country, which is not nearly as ethnically diverse as a lot of other countries, such as ours. Because of that, the results may be applicable to people of northern European heritage or even to other countries in northern and mid-Europe, but to countries like ours with such a melting pot of, uh, of diversity of, of different ethnic groups. We need to validate these results here before we have strategies to address asthma so we're not doing any harm to our children. Some children may not respond the same way, so I think we have to redo that study in our country. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ed. You're welcome. We'll be right back. 
It's time now for Stuff Guys Do. You know the new segment where we show you guys doing stuff. I do know that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do. Check out the <laughs> stuff this guy in Alabama is doing. Scotty Brooks is a library media specialist at a high school in Russell County. He is making a 90-mile bike ride to the state capital in Montgomery, Alabama to help provide more books and computers for students. For a year, it has been his mission to organize this charity, what he calls a ride to provide. Why? Why would he do something like this? Because guys like to do stuff. And in this case, they're doing good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, occasionally, we'll throw one of those in there. Yeah, yeah just to keep weird everybody stuff. honest <laughs> and not think they're crazy <laughs> all the time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at 6. Have a good night. Let the news follow you. From exclusive web content to text and email alerts, get your news wherever you are. From news and weather to high school football or even great cooking recipes, download our family of apps today. Tonight, two major storms hitting both coasts. The chain reaction crash. The pictures coming in right now. The winds blinding drivers, multiple injuries. And the East Coast now bracing the massive tornado outbreak. At least 18 confirmed tornadoes across several states. A home surveillance camera capturing this. The mid-air catastrophe tonight, the leading theories now emerging, a bomb, a missile, or was it mechanical? And now a top U.S. intelligence official will not rule out ISIS. Donald Trump in the debates breaking away from the rest of the candidates, what he now says before getting on that stage. The E. coli scare, Chipotle shutting down 43 restaurants, at least 22 people sick, multiple states. And the home explosion, and this evening, authorities say this time it was not natural gas. The new warning. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Monday night. And we begin with severe weather on both coasts. The chain reaction crash and the tornado outbreak. At least 18 confirmed tornadoes in 72 hours now.